Beautiful. So welcome everybody. We today um, are, um, it's in my money workshop workshop talking about taking the stress out of managing your money. Next slide, please. Um, this is a recording to be watched on YouTube. So um, as you watch the recording, if you have any questions, please comment uh, below um, and we will do our best to get back to you. Um, I'm leading the workshop today. My name is Laura Rotter. I'm a volunteer with My Money Workshop together with Lenore Walding, um, also a volunteer with Good My afternoon. Money Workshop. Next slide, please. My Money Workshop, we're a nonprofit organization. Um, we work with people, different age groups, different backgrounds uh, to have the skills to manage the finances wisely and uh, to use their money towards uh, a purpose that's important to them and make a lifetime of good financial decisions. Next slide. This particular workshop that we're uh, running today on May 25th is about credit cards, um, the do's and don'ts. Excited to get started. Next slide, please. Our objectives today is to give you information on credit cards so that um, you can make smart decisions and not let your credit cards take control of you. Um, you can put in the YouTube below or just answer to yourself, do you have credit cards? And um, how many credit cards do you have? Credit cards is distinct from debit cards. Debit cards can be used uh, similarly, but they immediately take the money out. Credit cards, as in the name, is um, actually extending credit to you, which we'll discuss. Next slide. Uh, managing credit cards is essential. And go on about how to do this. So <laughs> how do you even start? Uh, and we will do our best to answer that question. So as I said, a credit card is distinct from a debit card. A debit card, you need to have the money right now, not with you on um, as person on your person, but it needs to be in your bank account in order for you to actually go ahead with the purchase. A credit card, on the other hand, is actually extending credit to you, is saying you can buy it now, and we're lending, we the credit card company, lending you money, um, and you promise to pay it back in full later. Um, if, however, you do not pay it back in full, you will pay interest expense. You will compensate the lender for lending you that money. Um, and potentially also, if you don't pay even the minimum payment, you'll also be subject to late fees. Um, if you pay the minimum amount in full, and we will discuss this um, as we move ahead, you won't owe late fees, but you will own um, a lot of interest expense. Um, and this is what we're gonna focus on today, making smart choices with your credit cards. Next slide, please. So there's different types of credit. Um, it, uh, you may know credit that you can get, um, credit again being the idea that somebody's lending you money now to be paid in the future. So for example, if you buy a car, you can get a car loan that's you know four or five years long. And over that period of time, you'll be each payment is actually um, a little bit of the amount you owe and a little bit of the interest expense you agree to pay. Same thing with a mortgage. Um, the most common length of mortgage is 30 years where each month you pay a little bit of the amount you've borrowed and a little bit of the interest expense. Student loans as well. And of course, even smaller amounts of what's known as installment credit. Maybe you put uh, something lay away and, and pay for it over time. Credit cards, on the other hand, are revolving credit. They, they, you know, if you think of a revolving door, which is you have a certain amount that you can borrow over time and you borrow it and pay it back and borrow it and pay it back. The idea that 
you know, you, the door is revolving. It's not one amount that you borrow and then little by little pay it back over time. There's no set length of time, um, though ideally, as we'll discuss, you pay it back when, uh, after 30 days when it's due. Um, but uh, the credit cards com companies actually benefit from you taking as long as possible to pay um, back what you've borrowed. And the amount that's due each month may vary. If any of you um, have a car loan or a mortgage, you know that it's the same amount each month, but it depends on what you've borrowed each month. Um, that will dictate the amount that you owe at the end of each month. And you don't have to um, apply for a new loan each time you use it. You've applied it one time, your credit has been approved, um, we assume, if you have a credit card. And so you don't need to reapply each time you use it. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is not intuitive to, to um, people who first get a credit card, which is your you are borrowing for a particular length of time if you want to use it responsibly. You have 30 days to repay the amount you've borrowed. It's, um, I'm, I'm going to read this first statement, and it's a really important one. It's not free money. It's just a convenient way to pay. When you get to be an adult and you um, are approved for a credit card, it's nice uh, not to have to always have money with you if you see something that you feel you need and is important to buy. So, so the reason to have a credit card is for convenience, um, which leads me to the second very important po point. It's not free money, treat a credit card like cash. If you're not gonna be able to repay what you're borrowing within 30 days, it's not a smart idea to go ahead and make the purchase anyway, thinking, well, I've got a credit card so I can buy it. So number one tip, don't buy what you can't afford to pay back. You have about a month to repay it. Maybe you know you're getting paid and your paycheck's coming in the next couple of days and so you'll be able to. But if you don't know that, hope is not a strategy. Don't buy anything that you do not believe you'll have the ability to repay within 30 days. Next slide. So there are different kinds of credit cards. The one that you're likely most familiar with is the third column here is a bank card. It's a Visa or a MasterCard that's been issued by a bank. Um, and uh, as we just described, you carry it around for convenience and need to repay in full if you're going to be responsible within 30 days. You also may be um, familiar with store credit cards. Stores often um, try you to take, try to get you to um, have one of their credit cards, also at the end of the day, backed by a bank. Um, and they may entice you for that. You know, anything you buy today, if you apply for the card, you get 10% off or 15% off. And those cards are generally just used at the store. Uh, a prepaid credit card. Um, Marisol and I discussed this yesterday, you may get, um, you purchase a product or something and, and you'll get sent a card that's already loaded with $25 or $50, or maybe somebody buys you a gift card that is also a prepaid credit card. Um, so the money is already loaded onto the card. They're not looking for payment from your particular bank account. Something to pay attention to when you get a prepaid credit card is they often have expiration dates. So you sort of use it or lose it, um, which of course is not the same with a traditional credit card. And finally, the card all the way on the right is a secured credit card. And what is that? If, if you're right now unable to get approved for a traditional credit card, maybe you've never um, developed a good credit score before, you have no history of paying bills um, uh, for various reasons, maybe you've just graduated from college, um, or maybe you just don't have a good enough credit score and really want to start to build one. Um, 
you may say have $500 in a bank account and the bank that issues this, I think Discover Card, for example, issues secured credit cards, knows that that $500 is there. Um, they know they can dip into it if you purchase something and then don't pay them back. And this is a way to start to show credit card companies that you have a good payment history, that you borrow and that you pay back on time. And, and that helps you build your credit score and uh, be able to get a credit card in the future. Next slide, please. Um, so what's the interest that you pay? So interest is a way of compensating the lender for extending the credit to you. Um, you agree that you will, um, frankly, the, the banks give you this default 30 day period of time where you don't immediately pay interest on what you've borrowed. So if you pay within that you know, 30 day period, you won't pay any interest. So it is for that little period of time, it is free money, but once the, um, payment, the amount that you borrowed is due, you're going to be, they'll begin to charge you interest. Um, and interest for credit cards is typically very high. Um, so for example, a mortgage nowadays, a mortgage is somewhere around 3% over the life of the time that you borrow money towards purchasing a home, you'll be charged about 3%. Why? Because um, it's backed by your house. So if you don't pay it, the banks can come in and repossess your house. Same thing with an auto loan. It's backed by your auto. It's generally a little bit higher, maybe 7% interest, uh, depending on whether you're borrowing from the car company or not. But when you borrow from a using a credit card, if you don't pay it back on time, the interest is often way above 20%, which is very, very high. And here the point is being made a car loan similar to a mortgage. It's going to come up with a monthly payment. The interest isn't compounding because you're paying the interest and the principal amount each month. On the other hand, if you don't repay a credit card that's due, if you only make the minimum payment, the balance that remains will be charged 20%. And so that balance grows. And then 20% is charged on the higher balance. And then the following month, 20% is charged on that higher balance. That's known as compounding. The 20% isn't charged on the original dollar borrowed, but then is charged on the $12 borrowed and et cetera, et cetera. And it just keeps growing on itself in a way that is really hard to come out from under. Next slide, please. So simple interest versus compound interest, again, as I just described, the compounding effect can have a large, large impact on the amount that is due. Um, and as we go on to the next slide, I think we, we make a point of showing how high that compound interest can. So here's first some um, information on how to read a credit card statement. This is a, a written statement that you may get in the mail. Some of you at this point may just go paperless and look online. Um, if you look at this statement, it will both show you the payment due date on time. And this, uh, this is a little bit older slide. So the due date, for example, is January 23rd, 2018. Um, we would love you to check the fine print and see, is it due midnight of that day? If you are someone who tends to pay at the last minute or is it due at some other time during the day? In which case, for example, if it's 6 p.m. and you miss 6 p.m., you will owe interest on the entire balance. Ideally recommend, you know, schedule the payment for the day before it's due just to be safe. Um, as you see, uh, we've put a red circle around the minimum payment. The credit card company makes money by um, you borrowing and paying a lot of interest. So they'd love you to make just the minimum payment. They'll make a lot of um, interest. They will collect a lot of interest expense if that's the case. Um, we recommend, of course, paying the entire balance. Right here, it's twelve fifty eight fifty six, And if you miss the payment entirely. If you don't even make the minimum payment, not only will you be charged interest, but you'll also like in this case, be charged a $37 late payment. 
Um, do also want to point out that if you go online to make your payments, there'll be yet another number. And that number will be your current balance, which is how much you've charged to date. Um, not to confuse you too much. If you're confused, just make the largest payment, but you only owe the new balance because there was a cutoff date after 30 days and the next amount that you've charged, frankly, is not due and you won't be charged interest on it till the next date. So it, it can be very confusing. There's a minimum payment. That's the least that's due to at least not have a late fee. You pay the amount due and the current balance will show what you've continued to charge past this particular monthly due date. And if you have any questions, please put them um, in the comments below. Uh, next slide, please. So the good part about a credit card is first of all, you do need credit. I mean, if you're young and starting out or if you need to rebuild your credit score again, credit scores are important in so many things in life, and including if you want to be able to get an auto loan or be able over time to purchase a home, you need a good credit score that will determine, first of all, whether you're even approved and then often will also determine the interest um, expense, the interest rate that you'll be charged. It's good in an emergency, something happens and you, you need to purchase something quickly. Let's say your tires blow and you need to replace your tires. Um, it's important to not need the cash immediately, um, but be able to borrow for a short period of time. This is an important point in uh, that you're protected in case of fraud more than a debit card. Um, card. In actuality, um, I have always seen banks reimburse you if you say somebody stole your debit card number and, and withdrew money from your bank, but it's less of a given. You're less protected legally than with a credit card, where the credit card companies, if you um, say that you don't recognize charges and dispute them, those charges will be reversed. Um, used for travel and making reservations. Um, and then finally, rewards for spending, which, you know, we would just like to point out on the one hand, there's plenty of cash back credit cards. And it's nice if you're going to make the purchases anyway to get 1%, 1.5%, 2% back. And often um, we'll get points back um, if you see, can be as high as 5%, depending on the card and what you're spending the money on. On the other hand, if you're working, to really have a strong budget and be aware of what you're spending. Um, we recommend balancing those rewards with the fact that sometimes a debit card may be the way to go so that you don't, you know that you're not spending above your means. Um, the bad is exactly what we just said. You could be really unconscious um, about spending and even you know, frankly, people who are who are very able to pay it back still may have no idea how much they spend month to month because they're putting everything on credit cards and it's just, you know, happening unconsciously. Um, and of course, it'll damage your credit as one of the things that goes into a good credit score is um, keeping your balances to just about a third of what's available to you from the credit card companies to spend. That's known as utilization. And so you don't want to utilize, you don't want to use too much of your available credit or that will hurt your credit score. And um, of course, interest charges, if you spend more than you can afford to pay back, and of course, a penalty fee if you forget to pay it back. And finally, um, I just, again, want to um, emphasize how easy it is to do impulse purchases nowadays on your smartphone as you're browsing Instagram and you see ads or on Amazon. So um, just be aware that uh, if you're unconscious about your credit card spending, you can end up spending way more than you intend to. Next slide. Um, again, please share uh, in the comments below if you had a good or a bad credit card experience. So here's um, a great example that we have of how you can just be hurt by interest expense as well as late fees. So, 
you go to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm not sure you can get a $2 coffee at Dunkin' Donuts anymore. Maybe you can. <laughs> so you buy a $2 cup of coffee and then um, you forget to pay your credit card. So you get an interest expense fee and a $35 late fee. Two months later, your interest expense is that much higher on top of the late fee and the $2 and another late fee. So you've just spent $73 on coffee. So the moral of the story is pay on time and in full. And um, this slide in particular points out that if you mix, if you miss two payments. So not only do you get the late charges, but uh, interest expense may even go higher than the already high interest expense rate. So don't ignore paying your credit cards um, and you know, be aware of how much needs to be paid back. So what are the fees on credit cards besides the interest expense and the late fees that we talked about. Well, some cards charge annual fees. Most cards, if they aren't big, expensive, uh, perky cards, don't charge annual fees. So we recommend having a card that doesn't charge you an annual fee. Um, cash advance fees, uh, I made the point earlier that you get this window of 30 days where essentially you do have free money from the credit card company. You, you're borrowing and you don't have to pay it till the bill comes. However, that is not the case if you take a cash advance against your credit card. That is, you say, oh, you know, I need some more money. I'm going to put it on my credit card to take the cash. Well, they're going to immediately charge you interest expense on that cash advance. So we don't recommend taking cash advances on your credit cards. Also, if you travel overseas, it's important to make sure that your credit cards, some credit cards do um, not charge you foreign transaction fees. That is to say you're paying with a foreign currency. It needs to be converted back to dollars for you to repay it. Um, make sure that you have a card that doesn't charge you foreign transaction fees. And if you don't, um, have cash with you, um, have foreign exchange with you, or you know, be aware you're going to be charged foreign transaction fees. Um, balance transfer fees. Um, credit card companies are always trying to get you to transfer your balances over. So often they, they in order to, to incentivize you, won't charge you a fee, but make sure that's the case. A return payment fee. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe you, you sent the payment to the wrong place. Not sure. Um, over the limit fees is you have a certain credit limit and perhaps they will, you spend more than that limit. Often, frankly, you'll just be declined, but if you're not declined, they'll charge you another fee. And of course, the last two, which we've discussed already, um, if you make a late payment, you'll be charged a fee and finance charges are the same thing as interest expenses. Number one tip for managing credit cards. So I feel like we can say this about a lot of the tips. Be aware of what you're spending. So this goes back to our do's and don'ts. It's very hard to be aware of what you're spending on your credit card. If you've decided still that that's something you can do, well, one of the ways to do that is keep track of your purchases. Pick a day a week where you look and see how much you've spent and have, have an idea in your mind of how much you want to spend each month. And if you see that you've spent more than you imagined, um, don't spend anymore. <laughs> um, it's easier to do this, of course, if you're only spending cash or if you're only using your debit card. But if you want the points or otherwise or the convenience, then just freeze your spending. And actually, I will make the point that the convenience is no longer only solved with a credit card. You can use a debit card interchangeably with a credit card for the convenience of not spending a lot of cash and you'll be more aware of how much you're spending. But number one tip, don't spend more than you've decided to. Um, be aware of all the penalties. We just, you know, you can have access to these slides and we walk through the different penalties and different charges you may have with a credit card. 
be aware of them. Um, and that most important thing, don't get a credit card unless you know yourself to have the discipline, have the disciplines in place to be financially, fiscally responsible. If you don't trust yourself, don't get a credit card. You can use a debit card and have the same amount of convenience. Um, don't get seduced by what appears to be attractive credit card offers, um, unless again, you have the discipline. So sometimes you're making a large purchase and they'll say 0% interest for a year. Well, put like a month before you remind yourself, have a reminder on the calendar to repay it because you're going to get interest charge on the entire balance. If you know the, the next day comes up and you've forgotten to pay it, then it wasn't an attractive credit offer anymore. So you have to have the discipline and the reminders to make sure that you don't go, you know, longer than the period of time where you have that um, zero percent offer or zero down offer. Um, and if it's a zero down offer, just make sure you understand the terms. Uh, as we said earlier, many, many cards do not charge an annual fee. So don't sign up for a card that has an annual fee. Um, take advantage of any credit card rewards programs. Again, nowadays, it's not only points um, to be used elsewhere, but in, for ma in many cases, it's actually a cash back at the end of each month, which is very nice. Um, but don't spend more than you would otherwise spend just to get the rewards. And, you know, this last point here at the bottom of the slide should be in bigger type than all the others, which is pay your bill on time in full each month. And if you can't do that, don't use the credit card. Next slide. So now we've told you a lot of the ins and outs of a credit card. So how do you get one? Um, frankly, if you're not already getting offers in the mail and there's, you know, like histories of people's dogs getting offers in the mail and I'm so, so I wouldn't be surprised if whether or not you've been approved, you've gotten offers, but if you haven't, you can just go on the credit card company Visa or MasterCard, um, or your local bank and get an application. Um, it may be easier to get a store credit card, and that would be a way to start to build um, your credit, showing that you can pay a store credit card on time. Um, and a good point here, though, is don't decide that you're going to apply for five different store credit cards at the same time, because each time you apply the... Um, the potential lender, whether it's a store or whether it's a bank, is going to check your credit history. And um, so they'll be alerted that you're applying for a credit card and if you're apply or any form of credit. And if you apply uh, too many times in a short period of time, that can actually negatively impact your credit score. And finally, we, as we talked about, there's something called a secured credit card. If you are not right now able to be approved for a credit card, but want the convenience of not having to carry cash around and want to start building your credit score, then um, we recommend going to a bank and um, asking what information about you they need that you're going to need to keep some cash backing that secured card in a bank bank account with the bank, but you can then start to look forward to building your credit score to get a um, traditional credit card in the future. Uh, this is um, a great tool that I just learned about. The link is at the bottom of the slide. Again, you have access to these slides. It's a, a bank rate um, website that will help you uh, calculate if you only make the minimum payment based on your credit card balance and your credit card's interest rate, um, how long will it take you to repay the card and how much will you pay over time? So um, here it shows you that, for example, you have an $8,000 credit card balance and a 17% interest rate. Frankly, I think interest rates are often higher than that right now. And uh, you only make the minimum payment um, here calculated as uh, 193.33. 
Well, it's going to take you 26 and a half years to pay it off. And you're going to pay not $8,000, but over $18,000 because you will also pay close to $11,000 in interest. If on the other hand, you decide you can, you know, make a $600 monthly payment rather than the minimum balance, well, it'll take you only 15 months to pay it off and you'll pay less than $1,000 in interest. So the magic of compounding, which we often talk about in investing, but it really works against you in um, when it comes to credit cards and anything that charges you a large amount of interest. Next slide. Something to be aware of, um, and this is um, in the realm of identity theft that we're all so aware of now with all our different passwords <laughs> and ways of accessing our accounts. So if you're using a credit card, for example, um, to swipe at the gas pump um, or other places to pay for things, just be aware that people known as card skimmers can um, perhaps have some sort of mechanism in place to steal your credit card information. And the best way to be aware of this is what we said a bit earlier, which is have a, a weekly date with yourself to just look at your credit card bill. A, as we said earlier, to just make sure that you're spending within the limits you've set for yourself. But B, that's how you're going to see, oh my, I don't recognize that charge. Like I didn't make that charge. Um, if you're just a, never checking your, your credit card um, statement and just paying it um, each month, uh, that's not great because you're not going to be aware um, if somebody else has use of your card. Frankly, it's also you're not going to be aware if, you know, five months ago you put a recurring payment in place, you thought you'd use something monthly and you're looking at what? is that charge and might be yours, but you don't need it anymore. You're not using that product anymore or you thought you would and you never actually used it. So it's really important to make a date with yourself to actually look at your credit card. And that's why I weigh, um, you know, there is often the ability to set up an automatic payment of your credit card. So uh, again, you'll never have a late fee. You'll, you'll always make sure your credit card is paid. But um, I weigh recommending that. And frankly, I don't recommend it because I, I want you to look at your credit card statement before you pay it and make sure that you recognize all the charges and, um, and that you know how much you're spending each month. Next slide. Another tips, and, and this is obviously not only related to your credit card. We're so aware of identity theft nowadays. So um, don't, I mean, I'm a financial advisor and I ask people to send me their account statements and other information. And I never, never, never have them just email it to me. You don't want people to have access. Of course, anything with your social security number, never give it to anyone over the phone. Never just send it to someone in an email. Always make sure it's, it's, it's protected. And the same thing with credit card numbers. Um, safeguard all these documents, make sure that, for example, you have some sort of password generator like LastPass and others, and there's way there is that you could give people secure access to your credit card number without just sending it in an email or a text. Uh, if you have an old um, credit card that you're getting rid of because the new one was sent, cut it into pieces, put it in your shredder, don't just put it in the trash. Always be very careful about your account numbers, your social security number, your passport number, et cetera. Oh, here are today's key messages. Uh, I, again, I always feel like this should be in bigger type. Pay on time. If you don't think you're gonna have the ability to pay a credit card on time, don't have it. Put that, and once you've seen that you've paid more than you believe you'll be able to pay on time, take the credit card out of your wallet and put it in a drawer. Keep track of how much you owe. Make a weekly date with yourself. You know, spend 15 minutes, look at your credit card bill and make sure that it makes sense to you. You don't see any unrecognizable charges and you know how much you've spent relative to what you intended to spend. And Again, put, put the card in your drawer if that's not the case. 
Credit cards are a wonderful convenience for those of us who can use it responsibly, um, but it can also be, you know, really scary, really wreck your budget if you um, accumulate late fees and interest expenses. So, so I think there was a list there of, of workshops we're doing in the future. Yeah, so Laura, just go back to the Q&A. Coincidentally, we have a few participants that have joined us live. Yeah. So if uh, our lovely community members on board at the moment have any questions for Laura or Lenore, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, or you can comment in the chat box. We'll exactly. give you a couple of seconds if you have any questions. And Lenore, while we're waiting, was there a list just before of the uh, of the upcoming workshops? I thought I saw oh, it. One oh, sec. Okay. Yeah, it's like at the very beginning. Oh, right. That, okay. Certainly. Um, so this will be posted on my Money Workshops YouTube channel if you want to watch it from the beginning. Yes. Will it be emailed? To you? So that's yes, it will be after. Uh, sometime next week, they will receive the presentation via email. Perfect. Uh, if as long as they registered through our through our website, uh, we have copy of their emails. If not, perhaps just put it in the chat box as a safety. And here's the list of the uh, follow-on workshops. If anyone's interested. Right. So we'll be talking a lot more about credit score in the future and identity theft and how to protect yourself, um, tips to stay out of debt. We talked a bit about that. Today, understanding the banking system and how to bank right, um, investing and, um, and budgeting. So now we discussed a bit of that um, in previous and we will be discussing going forward. Marisol, you got the information from the chat yes uh i someone did share did share their email yes. uh, address with us because this is a new email address it's not what i have from the other five participants that i forwarded information this morning thank you okay so um there we have more resources on the my money workshop website as well as right Facebook page and other social media pages. And um, if there aren't any other questions, I think we're done. There, there is also a YouTube channel, right? Marisol, I don't see it listed here. It should be uploaded to YouTube uh, in the next day or so okay. for additional viewing. Okay, and so you just go to YouTube and, and Google and put in uh, my money workshop? Yes, and also we'll be sharing all the links on our social media. So here are our handles. Please do follow us. Um, we share a lot of educational, informational, inspiring, and fun content. And, you know, financial literacy is a lot of fun if you do it the right way. So please <laughs> follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Thank you, Sveta. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, and please consider joining us uh, for our workshops that are coming up. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lenore. You did a great job with this. Oh, I'm so sorry for the two mess ups. <laughs>